Hey, Better Editors, welcome back. My name is Chris, and today we are starting part three in our 10-part series in learning Premiere Pro. And today, we start the edit. I know you've been waiting for it, so let's get our hands dirty and dig through some footage. All right, so today we are actually gonna get our hands dirty and dig into some footage. We're not gonna do any real editing today, but we're gonna learn how to edit. We're gonna learn how to get clips from the program or the project panel or the source panel into the timeline. Now, we're gonna do that by learning what I would consider some of the most essential types of edits. Before we do that, do you wanna see what we're gonna make? Sure you do. delicious. That's right. I'm a huge fan of coffee and I thought putting together a short little promo for a coffee shop that they could use on social media or something like that would be really fun to make. Hopefully you agree. Now let's dig into some of these clips. So first thing we need to do is get some footage in this project. For that, I'm going to go up to my media browser, navigate to my footage. So I'm going to grab all of these clips and drag them into my footage bin. Perfect, this is everything we have to work with. It's not a ton of footage, but I think it's gonna be enough to make a really good promo for us. So first thing I wanna do is load up a clip into our source monitor. And to do that, I'm gonna double click any clip I want. This milk coffee pour looks great. And the reason I say that is because it has a lot of action to it. There's one pour, there's two pours, there's three pours. We're making this really pretty design inside the coffee cup. There's a lot for us to look at here. So I'm gonna go ahead and just grab a clip. I really like this pour here at the end. And it starts right here, and I'm going to mark an endpoint by hitting I on my keyboard. You could do the same thing by clicking the endpoint mark in right here. I'm going to go up to my timeline and drag until we just finish the pour like that. Great. And I'm going to hit the O key to mark an out point. You can also hit the out point here. Again, it's a lot faster to use your keyboard shortcuts rather than moving your mouse from left to right and getting all the way down here. It's a lot of work. That said, how are we going to get this clip that we just selected into our timeline? Well, there's a lot of ways we can do it. And to start, we're just going to drag and drop. So for that, if I hover my mouse on top of this film strip here or on top of the audio strip, I can grab either or and pull them into the timeline. For our needs, I just want the video. So I'm going to come here and drag it to the very beginning of the timeline. Now check this out you're going to see this warning that pops up that says clip mismatch. This is basically saying that our settings of our sequence don't match the same thing that our clip has. That's totally okay. Generally, you want to have your settings, your sequence settings set before you start adding media into it, and you're always gonna save your sequence settings. Don't let the program change your sequence settings. Keep them the way you want them, not what Premiere wants. Now let's zoom in a little bit. Now we can look at this. So that's how we get our clip in here. If we start playing, we've got our clip and our timeline. Look at that, it's showing up in our program monitor. Another way that we could get the same clip into our, pro, into our timeline, let's move this to about six seconds, and then we're gonna come back up to our source monitor. And we can either add new in and out points or work with the ones we already have. I'm just gonna leave the ones we already have because they're already there. Now what we can do is overwrite and edit. To overwrite and edit, we're gonna hit the B key. And notice it adds audio and video. Now this clip doesn't have audio attached to it, but it does give us an audio a track. This clip is basically silent. So there's nothing going on here, but there's still technically audio attached to it. If you wanted to override a clip and not have the audio come in, you need to change your track targets. So we can turn off this patch on the left-hand side. And now if I hit the B key again, it just paste the video into my sequence. Now you might be wondering, what does overwrite mean? We don't have anything in the sequence right now, so this clip is just gonna go and go and go. But let's say I parked my playhead at the beginning of this clip. So I'm gonna load up this clip back into our source monitor and click on the video, so that's what I'm looking at. Let's make some new in and out points. So I'm gonna find this pour right here, mark it in, move forward, and mark it out. Okay, so it's a little shorter, but we have this short little pour right there. And now I'm gonna come back into my timeline 
and position this, say, in the middle of this clip and hit overwrite. So hit B, and look at that. We added that clip on top of this previous clip. It just completely overwrote it. And you'll notice if we play through it, the clip changes into a brand new clip. Now let's try to insert a clip. Insert a clip does exactly what you might think. It inserts a clip between two things. So let's go back to our copy footage and load up this first pour. That was a nice pour if I do say so myself. Now let's scroll to the first clip that we put in. I'm gonna put it at about the two second mark on the timeline and hit the V key for insert. And look what it did. It pushed all of the clips in our sequence down to the right. And we have our first clip that we had. It just inserted the new clip and then it picks up right where that first clip left off. Now again, this would also work if we had our audio turned on. So if I go back to the patch panel and turn on audio and hit the V key, it adds that clip with an audio track attached. Now, if you wanted to do the same thing and only insert audio, you could do that as well. You can unpatch the video panel and hit insert and it would insert only video. Let's clear out all of this. To do that, click in the timeline and hit Control A or Command A and then hit delete. Great. Let's get a clip back in here. So pull a clip into your timeline however you want. I'll drag. Oh, that was a good thing that I just did there. So I tried to drag this video clip in, but I'm getting this interesting little icon down here that's saying, nope, you can't do that. The reason I can't do that is because I'm trying to drag the video and my video source isn't patched. So if I click video, come back in here and drag, it's gonna give me the same warning because I have no clips in the sequence. So again, I'll say keep existing settings because that's what I want. All right, we have that great pour right there. Now what I wanna show you is how to add an edit. Let's say we're going along and we decide that's where I want this clip to stop, right there. One way to add an edit is to come over to your razor blade tool, click on it, hover on your clip and click it. And you've added an edit and you could hit the A button or click your selection tool and you could drag that clip wherever you want it to go. Now they are two independent clips. A faster way to do that, if we undo, so hit Control Z or Command Z until the edit's gone, a faster way to do that is to hit the G key that we set in our keyboard preferences. That adds an edit. Look how much faster that was than having to go and grab the tool, bring it back, make the edit. It makes the edit wherever our playhead sits. So let's just clear all this out. We don't need any of that. And let's bring in this clip again. So I'm just gonna overwrite. I'll hit the B key to bring in both the video and the audio. And now I wanna show you how to trim these clips. Let's bring in a brand new clip to help illustrate this. So we're gonna say cup of coffee on the surface. So what does this do? It's just a coffee that's just sitting there. Okay, not much action, but hey, it's something. So let's just add a little bit of this. That's great. I wanna add this clip to the end of my timeline right now. And now I can hit overwrite and we have a new clip in the timeline, great. So now we're gonna look at how to trim a clip. Let's say I think that this first clip is too long. If I run, let's make this a little bit bigger to help illustrate this. If I run my mouse along the edge of this edit, notice that it changes colors and shapes. So what you'll see here, this yellow clip is called a ripple trim. And so we can pull this to the left and shorten that clip and look, it pulls this clip along with it. At the same time, if I wanted to extend it, I could push this clip and it would push that clip out of the way. It doesn't overwrite it, it pushes it. And that would apply to as many clips as you have in your sequence. So to help illustrate that, I'm gonna grab this clip and do another edit. This is going to be an alt drag. So with this clip selected, I can hold alt and drag this clip anywhere I want and it creates an exact copy of it further down the timeline. Now. Watch as I trim this. So if I pull this clip again, it moves both of these clips. Same thing if I push it. Now the ripple trim also works the opposite direction. If I want this clip to be longer, I can push this and notice it'll make this clip longer, push these clips further down the timeline and this clip is unchanged. And if I want this clip to be shorter, I can shorten it. It shortens this clip and pulls all these clips closer together. Now let's say I decided I don't want this clip, but I prefer this clip to be a little bit longer. And to do that, we'll roll right on top of it. That's denoted by the red feature there. All right, let's get some more clips into the sequence. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this lame coffee shot where we're not doing anything. And I'm gonna clear my in and out points by hitting Shift X. 
and then I'm going to put the entire clip into my sequence. Let's go grab another one, and I'll just drag this clip from my project panel into my timeline. So now we've got two clips in here. And what I want to do is I'm going to take another clip and drop it like right here. That looks good. So what we have is a coffee cup, we've got some coffee pouring, and we have some beans moving around. Now let's say that I really like this, the length of this clip in the middle, but I don't necessarily like the action. What I can do is hit the S key, and that pulls up my slip tool, and then you can click on that clip and slide it. And what that does, you'll see that we have two windows that pop up in our program viewer. Those windows show us the head of the clip and the tail of the clip. And so what that's doing is letting us slide the clip inside of the in and out points that are marked in the timeline. I want this to start where this starts to fill up, which is about right here. So I'm going to grab my slip tool and slide it until we get right there. OK. Let's go ahead and clear everything that's in our sequence and do something new. So we'll grab this milk coffee pour again, because it's probably my favorite. Keep the settings. And let's pull in this milk steamed shot. All right, that's good. Now we're going to learn how to nudge. So when we nudge a clip, we can select the clip and then hit our comma or period keys to move the clip left or right. Remember, you can look at the arrows on top of those keys to know which direction it's going to go. So I want it to go a little bit to the left. And to do that, I'm going to hit my comma key. And it's going to move the clip every time I hit that key. And same thing, if I want it to go to the right, I can hit that key again. Perfect. The last thing that I want to show you is that let's say I really like the length of this clip or I want to use it again in my sequence. I can actually copy this whole clip by selecting it, hitting Control C or Command C, moving somewhere else in my timeline and hitting Control or Command V. And it pastes it. OK, guys, I realized that that wasn't the most exciting thing, but hey, we did get our hands on some footage. And you know what? We're going to start doing some actual editing in the next part of this course. We're going to get our footage organized and pull some selects so that we can lay down a solid edit quickly. See you then.